If this is your first time coming across my videos, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and enjoy the video. The popular R&B girl group in Vogue exploded on the scenes in the early 90s, producing multiple hits, winning numerous awards, and also being nominated for multiple Grammys. They were beautiful, had angelic voices, and could harmonize as one. Their sound was magical. Nobody sounded like in Vogue. They were the modern-day Supremes with their own sound. The members' names were Terry Ellis, born September 5, 1963, from Houston, Texas. Don Robinson, born November 24, 1966, from London, Connecticut. Cindy Huron, born September 26, 1961, from San Francisco, California. And Maxine Jones, born January 16, 1962, from Patterson, New Jersey. In the late 80s, Atlantic Records-based production and songwriters Denzel Foster and Thomas McElroy came up with the idea to form a modern-day girl group to replicate the success of the late 1950s and 60s girl groups like the Supremes. So they auditioned 3,000 girls with Don, Maxine, and Cindy making the final cut. The group was supposed to be a trio, but after hearing Terry sing after her plane showed up late for the auditions, they added her to the group, making the group a quartet. In Vogue was signed to Atlantic Records on April 3, 1990. After putting together the group, Foster gave them the name For You, then changed it to Vogue, but another group had already claimed the name, so they settled for In Vogue. The group began working on the debut album, Born to Sing, in August of 1989, and wrapped it up in December of that same year. The album charted at 21 on the Billboard 200s and number 3 on the Billboard R&B charts. The first single off the album, Hold On, took off overnight and became an instant hit. The video also helped the single rise to the top. Everyone was like, who are these beautiful girls with these voices? They wore little black dresses, AKA the LBD. Every woman ran out and got them one of these little sexy dresses. In Vogue has started a fashion trend that still goes strong until this day. The song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts and number two on the Hot R&B charts. The song was a smash that everybody went out to buy. They released several more hits off the album like Lies, You Don't Have to Worry, which is one of my favorite songs, and Don't Go. The album was certified three times platinum, selling three million copies. They would win multiple awards for the album. In Vogue won Soul Train and Billboard Music Awards. The ladies were dubbed divas and started to get endorsement deals. They would appear in a Diet Coke commercial directed by Spike Lee. In the spring of 1992, they dropped their second album titled Funky Divas, releasing smash hits like Never Gonna Get It and Giving Him Something He Can Feel. The album outsold the first album, Born to Sing, peaking at number one on the R&B charts. The next year, they dropped the single Free Your Mind, which did phenomenal on the charts and was in heavy rotation on R&B and pop radio. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing that joint. The album went on to sell 5 million copies and was nominated for four Grammys. The ladies would get more endorsement deals, like with the shoe company Converse, which they also appeared in the commercial for. In 1993, they were featured as an opening act on the Luther Vandross tour, Never Let Me Go. Behind the scenes, the tour was a hot mess full of drama. Luther, being the diva that he was, had a lot of demands for the ladies. They were not allowed to wear certain colors like silver and black because that was his colors and they could not walk past his dressing room. One day they walked past his room and he caught the popo on them. Walking past his dressing room was the quickest way for the girls to get to the stage. He wanted them to walk or drive around that huge venue for them to get to that stage. And the shady part is one of the members was pregnant. When the police came, they was like, really? And they did absolutely nothing. They should have arrested him for wasting their time. 
This speak volumes on how insecure he was about the ladies. He invited them on a tour just to treat them beneath him. He wanted them to know he was the voice, even though they sung just as well. But I guess they had something he could never have or be. Word on these streets is that he did the same thing to Anita Baker, but I'm going to save his tea for his video coming soon. In Vogue would go on to make numerous television appearances on TV shows like In Living Color, A Different World, Rock, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper. The same year they would make a cameo in the box office movie Batman Forever. Also, they was featured on Salt and Pepper Top 10 hit What a Man. The song and video had major success. But just like most things good, things started to crumble and come to an end. Now that they were solidified platinum selling artists, they wanted to negotiate their contract, especially Don. The head of the label, Silvio Rohn, felt it was going to be a problem with Don, aka Don was no dummy. Don said each member of En Vogue was making two pennies apiece while they made the label millions. Unfortunately, this is a common practice with the labels. They rob the artist blind, leaving them the scraps left on the table. She stood up for the group and she stood alone, so she was made to be a problem. With Dawn. So Sylvia, in her mind, was a divide and conquer. I want to get Dawn and Terry distracted, keep these other two hoes over here broke. It was Don referred to the other members as slaves that were free and scared to leave the plantation because master gave them food and a shack to sleep in, basically saying they were afraid to leave their current situation and seek new opportunity. They felt something was better than nothing. They were supposed to do another album, but the label decided to give Terry a solo deal. Don was pissed that Terry was still in the studio recording music and felt if all the girls would have stuck together and applied more pressure to the label, they probably would have negotiated a better deal. Don was upset and confronted Terry about doing the solo project. Terry told her, look, I got bills to pay. Don says, shit, we all got bills to pay. They went on to release their third album titled MV3 on June 17, 1997 that spawned a few hits like Don't Go that was featured on the Set It Off soundtrack and other singles like Whatever and Too Gone, Too Long. The album was certified platinum by the RIAA. The group fell apart and Don quit. I guess they thought because all of them can sing, they can do it without Don. Wrong. Not saying Don was the best singer and the others wasn't as good. The world knew and loved them as a quartet. It just wasn't the same without Don. Don was a piece of that pie and without her ingredient, it just didn't taste the same. If they would have stayed together, they could have continued on to greater things. But like every group since the beginning of time, money and ego break them apart. Terry, Maxine, and Cindy went on to record their fourth album that did not have much success. The record label gave them the boot after their failed album. But on the other hand, Don went on to appear and record the jazz classic Drop Me Off in Harlem for the movie Life. Then later that year, she joined the soulful group Lucy Pearl with past member of the 90s supergroup Tony Tony Tone, Raphael Sadiq. The group had success with their 2000 song Dance Tonight, reaching 35 on the Billboard charts. After trying to negotiate a fair agreement with her bandmates and Raphael, Don quit the group. However, the group disbanded in 2001 and did not release a statement. After searching for a new deal, Don signed with Dr. Dre label after Math Entertainment, which did not last long. Then after an eight-year absence, Don reunited with her old group, In Vogue. She said people think she left because she wanted to be a diva and go solo, and that was far from the truth. Don said she left because they were put in a situation where they weren't making any money. Those ladies worked way too hard to be bringing in pennies on the dollar. The girls performed at the 2008 BET Awards alongside Alicia Keys, 
SWV and TLC, and in 2009, the group did a 20th anniversary tour, which the ladies appear on the cover of Jet Magazine to promote the tour. In 2011, In Vogue recorded an album, but this time without Don, because of agreement issues, which led Don to quit the group. Don kept her foot on their necks. In 2013, Cindy and Terry sued Maxine and Don for the name in Vogue, plus $1 million in damages back in 2012. They claimed Maxine and Don was illegally torn under the name in Vogue after the group broke up, but had no rights since Terry and Cindy owned the LLC. The judge ruled in Cindy and Terry's favor, giving them the rights to the name, but they failed to prove any damages and was given no money. In October of 2019, Don reunited with En Vogue for an onstage performance to salute Silvio Rome. This makes the first time the group performed together in five years. Later that year, Don and Maxine began touring under the name Funky Divas. To date, En Vogue has sold over 30 million records worldwide and are often considered one of the best female vocal groups of all time and named the 90s Virgin of the Supremes. In December of 1999, Billboard magazine ranked the band as the 19th most successful recording artist of the 90s and in 2015, Billboard magazine named the group the 9th most successful girl group of all time. Despite the ladies' arguments and breakups, they are all still friends. Cindy, Terry, and Maxine still performs together until this day. Thanks for watching my videos and remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit that bell notification for all my latest updates and videos.